Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to shop. It is hot out here. Way too hot for this. I just got home from work and that's what the clown suit is all about. But I wanted to catch you up because I'm working on a couple of projects and one of them is really important to me. Now, any of you that get my Instagram channel, I should give you a link to that below, down below in the comments section and where you like and all that kind of stuff anyway, below there. You uh, know that I have picked up on making um, or bringing life back into junk guitars that I find in guitar shops laying in the scrap pile or in the window of the pile of guitars that nobody wanted. You might have seen the Mississippi junk pile. I'll give you a link to that episode up here. But my latest one is now this one I'm calling the Texas junk pile. It is an old arch top and it's in pretty good shape. Um, it's been stripped down and um, got a truss rod. Uh, looks pretty good. But I'm going to do an episode about this one and catch you up on how I take uh, the kind of yard sale junk I uh, find and make a guitar. I don't know. Is purdy the right word? Yeah, if you're in Texas, it's purdy. But I want to set this aside and tell you about another project that's really important to me. All right, welcome to my other project. This is the one that took me away from guitars for a little bit. Um, for any of you that watch the background here or have done the math, I mean, or hit Google and finally figured out how to spell my name, y'all know that I sit on a school board in uh, my local school district and um, Tammy's condition and a few other things finally got me up to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to serve my, my community by uh, trying to help on the school board. Believe it or not, I have certain like talents in the <laughs> public sector that I might transfer to that. Anyway, what does that have to do with this desk up here? Well, we, us old men remember this desk. You sat in it when you were small. You put your feet on the floor. You, <laughs> you uh, stared straight ahead and if you started taking your pocket knife which you were not supposed to have and started carving stuff in this desktop then you would be out there with a sander and believe me most of these desktops had evidence of sanding because the other boys that were like you had made it about this thin. Now the girls desk they were of normal size because they didn't engage in that type of troublesome activity so it's kind of ironic I've run across people that knew me in school and now they find out I'm on the school board and it's like Really? What does public education come to? Anyway, in all seriousness, um, 2020 is probably one of the worst years for public education in the history of schooling in the United States. Um, and uh, this pandemic thing has basically turned education upside down. Now, outside of my service on the school board, um, I also attend school. I take law-related classes some nights of the week. Kendra drug me into that. Uh, but anyway, so I know what it's like to be displaced and to not sit in the classroom and have a teacher up there that can answer your questions or present the material. And I think one of the things that teachers do that we might not understand is they take a group of kids and take this material that needs to be presented and ultimately the kids will have to test on it to a standard that somebody sets. You got a bunch of kids in there, some of them are really quick, some of them are quick in some things but not others. But a teacher has to be really good at looking out in the room and making sure that everybody is paced uh, in a way that they all get it. And that's a huge responsibility. Now, I think teachers do that by um, reading body language and seeing what's going on and looking at behaviors and saying, why is this kid acting up? Um, how can I help them? But when you take that tool away from a, a teacher that, by the way, teachers are credentialed. They give a lot of time to becoming a teacher and making sure that they're fit to go in the classroom with their knowledge level. And then you take that skill set and all the social stuff that goes with it and just the human compassion part of it and bundle that up. Now all of a sudden you take all of that away and tell the teacher you're going to be on television and the kids are going to be in a chat room trying to tell you they need help and then you got kids like me in the chat room, God knows what we're doing. But in any event, public education has been turned upside down on its nose and I think the worst part of it for some parents is right now 
the classroom has become your living room, your child's bedroom, and it's very, very difficult to know what you should do, what the learning environment looks like, how much you should be involved, uh, when you should kick back. Um, there's a million things that parents have related to me. And so somebody gave me this old desk here, and um, it just hit me that somewhere um, in my kindergarten class, the kids are coming to my district this year, there's going to be a kid out there who will not spend the first day of kindergarten in the public school, but in, instead at home. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to refinish this desk, kind of like we did with the, remember the secret project where we did a, a box holder and some slides that went in it. That was going to be my entry for the AV fair, um, and I've got a lot of ribbons running, and, and they even canceled that this year. So this, this project is really important to me. So we're going to strip this down, and we're going to do our shabby, cheap, chick flick, teal treatments desk, and then we're going to go uh, to a trophy shop and get a plaque that says, my tomorrow starts today, and we're going to put it right up here, and I think I'm going to put a coin in this somehow like we do in our next. But anyway, um, once this is all done, we're going to get some supplies and you put on your desk and we're going to find a way to get this to a kindergartner in my district. Now, as you watch me do this, um, maybe figure out, can you get a chair? Can you get something? Or can you reach out to your local school district and say, hey, what is it that I can do to help the kids in my town during this very difficult time? Because you want to remember, these kids grow up to be our community and um, right now is a really bad time for them. So whether um, you can do something of a physical nature, like build something or donate something. Or when you see a kid on the street, just say, hey, I'm proud of you. I'm glad you're going through this. And how's your day going? Tell me about what you're learning. And um, anyway, um, I'm about ready to get the Kleenexes out and we'll move ahead from here. But the next time um, you see this desk, it'll all be done and we'll, we'll uh, find a way for it to be useful again to some kid out there who really needs it right now. So thanks for uh, watching this episode with me. It's not about guitars, but it's something about our kids and our and their future, and that's really, really important to me. So let's get to work. All right, let's remember this episode is about education, so let's start with botany. That right there is Prosopis chilensis, Chilean mesquite. Remember that. It will be on the quiz now. Moving along to the project at hand, we have taken this fine specimen and some glue and clamps and solved any potential structural deficits that may exist. It is now ready for a base coating using the official color of this channel, Chick Flick Teal. All right, there we go. Now we can watch paint dry. And we'll move on to the next exciting step. All right, now we're going to take gray chalk paint, an old brush that we don't care about too much, and we're going to go over the entire chair, but we don't need to cover everything. We just want to kind of hit it like so because we're going to want this teal color to come back through here and there to make it look old. Anyway, let me get this on and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, this is a good place for a recap. We start off with this old desk, small student desk, covered it in chick flick teal, let that dry, and then came back and slopped some gray chalk paint on it here and there with a little bit of the teal showing through. Now everything's dried. We're going to take two kinds of sandpaper, rough 36 grit. This will take anything off of anything and 150 grit. So the 36, it goes along and it takes a lot of material off quickly like this. And it gives you the wear patterns that you're looking for that looks like there's been years of somebody slipping in and out of this chair. And we're going to go over this with this and then we're going to follow it up. And the 150 makes it nice and smooth. And then we take a rag and make sure all the dust gets off of it. But anyway, I'm going to do this chair. I'll show you a couple of the tricky spots. All right, guys, this is a, uh, an example of 
where you want to be looking at your work. Like you can see that there is a lower spot in this chair here. So after the years, this part would be more exposed than this part. So when you're standing here like this, let the pressure you're putting on the piece to find where the wear is. Like so. And then similarly up here, someone sitting in here and getting in right here and resting their arm right in this area here is certainly going to show more wear than somewhere over here and again where we ride and then you can see here there's remnants of crayons of years ago and that kind of thing where the paper was but yeah. we're getting close now it's just a matter of making this thing look like it was actually a desk used in a school well it was All right, got to get them corners last. The last thing we want to do is take a rag and get rid of all that dust and kind of feel are there any spots that are sticking out that we need to take the finer sandpaper to make sure it's nice and smooth because now we're going to put the magic stuff on it. All right, this is where the magic happens. This stuff here is called antiquing glaze. And um, shake it up. All this stuff is water clean up, so that's good. But anyway, it looks kind of like axle grease or something. So we just take a rag here and put some on here. And then just wipe it across. And it looks like you're wiping grease on the stuff, like so. We just get it everywhere here and try to put it on somewhat evenly everywhere. You just wait a little bit, like so. And then you just come along and wipe it off, like so. And the darkness disappears, but it really makes all that aging work you've done pop. I'm going to work in sections because I don't want this stuff to stay on in one spot too long and then come back later and have it be darker than everything else. But yeah, this is just pretty simple. Wipe it on, leave it sit, come back, wipe it off. Okay, I wanna kinda of show you here. This part has been done and then this part hasn't. So when we put this glaze on there like so and leave it sit for just a little bit. This stuff has been on here a little bit longer. Then I just go ahead and wipe it off. And you can see that there's a big difference here and that looks a lot more natural and better. So you just have to play with it a little bit. What you don't want to do is do one section, leave it sit there and then come back to wipe it off later because you're going to see a lot of variance in the work. But remember, things kind of age evenly if they're out in the sun, then some parts of the chair are out in the sun more than others, some shaded, but whatever. But you just come along like so, and then wipe it off. You can always put more on if you need to, but getting it off when you've put too much on is something else. All right, we are wrapping up by putting the antiquing glaze on the seat, and this is probably one of the most worn areas, so it can be just a little bit lighter. So there we go. We'll let that soak in a little bit before we wipe it off. We'll be ready for the next step. All right, there we go. Everything's looking good. We're gonna let everything dry out and then we're gonna do the next step, which is gonna make all these colors pop. All right, everything is dry. The last thing we're gonna do is take some 220 grit and go over the edges and just kind of give it the final highlight. And then we're going to coat this thing deeply in gloss polyurethane. All right, guys, this project is done. 
D-U-N done. And it is awesome. It is so awesome that I brought out my CD shirt to help with the big reveal here. Civil Defense. And um, I'm a believer that it is our moral and civic obligation to do good things for the communities we live in and especially for the youth of our communities. Now, before I show you the details about this, there's a couple of things I want to tell you. And I'm very serious. And sometimes you need to just listen to what I'm saying and believe it like it's a God-given truth. And you can usually tell when those times are. And they're whenever I open my mouth to talk to you, that's when. Okay, the first thing I want to tell you is Meadowlark School is the best school in the universe. Now, if you call and you get their answer machine, it will say that. Meadowlark is the best school in the universe. Now, just believe it. Next thing you need to just believe is Tess Toledo, who is the principal of Meadowlark School, is the best principal ever. Everest of the whole timest ever. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, yeah, they're okay too, but Tess Toledo, yeah, number one, brother. Believe it. I'll tell you what, I wish Sade Thomas was here so I could get her fife and drum band to do a drum roll. Uh, but you know what? I got a fife here, so I'll do my own drum roll. See, Sade Thomas, love you guys. Okay, let's, let's, let's do the unveil. This thing is awesome. All right, let me get the cameraman, me, to do a little pan through to show you what's going on here. Incredible. All right, guys, let's take a look. I like the way the finish on this turned out. It's nice and smooth. Uh, got a good riding surface here. Comfortable chair. They made these things nice. We put a 2020 nickel in there. It's nice and shiny, and uh, you'll give everybody a reminder. It's got a nice place to store your books and stuff here, but I'm really happy with the way the finish turned out here. Now, we put a plaque on here. My tomorrow begins today. Um, you know what? I think that's pretty touching. I mean, I think Honest Abe is smiling. Oh, look, Mrs. Olson, she just can't believe it. Open-mouthed just in utter disamazement at how incredible this desk is. So let's turn it around. There's something else I want to show you. All right, look at that right there. It says Ken Falls. If you ever hear that name, yeah, it's me. It says I'm the school board president in 2020, and that is a fact. Um, and this is on the back of this chair because the message is, hey, kid, whoever you get this, I got your back. I do have your back. Oh, almost forgot the most important thing. We put brand new bolts and glued up all the joints, but wherever we put in new wood screws, yeah, look at that. Chick flick teal, you know it. Yeah, people say I value myself pretty highly, but um, I guess you'd have to have a mirror to understand what that means. But you know what? I am, I am, even me, I'm blown away by how this turned out. I like it. All right, guys, wasn't that great? Um, I'm happy with it, and I'm real happy with where it's going. We found the kids that are going to get this desk, and um, it's incredible. Um, but I want to finish this episode with a little story that I heard one time. Um, there was these people, I lived in Missouri about three-quarters of a mile off the Mississippi, right, at, right along Highway 61, north of Hannibal, Hannibal, Missouri, a little bit, where uh, Mark Twain and all that took place. But anyway, um, the economy was bad or something, and their family ended up uh, kind of having it rough for a little bit, and they kind of lived in this place. Um, it was kind of pretty much of a shack. Didn't have running water in the house. Didn't have indoor bathroom facilities. And um, yeah, it was pretty rough, pretty dismal. And uh, the kids were new at school and hard to make friends and all that kind of thing. And um, I don't think they had clothes like as good as some of the other kids and stuff. And so summertime came after the first year they were in school. And one morning there was a knock on the door and um, 
it turns out that the elementary school art teacher had come by to check on the kids and um, see how they were doing and make sure that they were okay during the summer. And her being an art teacher, um, she brought some art supplies, crayons, stuff to draw with and, and, and stuff. And I think she was a believer that just because it's summertime, it doesn't mean that you need to stop learning, that learning can't be fun. And um, anyway, that art teacher's name was Mrs. Brennan. And Mrs. Brennan stopped by my house uh, one summer about 1968. Thank you, Mrs. Brennan. I'll never forget you. I've been through some things in my life, but it's the things like Mrs. Brennan stopping by my house that made a difference. And um, if you're just blown away by my incredible artwork, thank Mrs. Brennan. Alrighty then. Um, there's some links below. You want to check them out, give me a like. And you know what? Get out there and find a kid. Do something good for a kid because um, like the plaque says, for a kid, their tomorrow starts today. Uh, we can talk about what we're going to do for an amen, amen. Everybody's got the amenas now. You know what? Make a decision to make a kid's day today important so their, their tomorrow looks promising. And thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.